Hello and welcome to this video. What I want to do in this video is to create an executable file using LabVIEW. Um, in this case, what I want to do is there's a VI that has already been created in LabVIEW and I just want to effectively turn it into an executable file or rather I should say create an executable um, version, an executable file from it. So, um, you could either do one of two things. You could start by creating an empty project and then create the VIs you want to turn into executable files, or you could take a VI that already does exist and now turn that into an executable. So it turns out I do have a VI, a VI already, which I made some a while ago. I could show you the block diagram of this. It's um, a way too complex um, block diagram to do something as simple as a countdown timer, but I made this to be as a tutorial. Um, when I was teaching someone. So um, this is way too complex for a simple program as a countdown timer, but then it works. And um, I could just simply run this. And when I tell it to, when I tell it to um, start counting, it starts counting down from two minutes. I could count down to zero. Once it gets to zero, it will stop. So, but again, that's, um, it, it, so that's how the VI works. Now to turn this into an executable, I'll need to um, create a project. It's, to create an executable file, you must have a project. So I'll go to um, project and simply say create project. Now, because I already have a VI open, it will ask me whether I want to add the current VI into um, a project. So I'm going to click on blank project. In this case, I could click, there are several options in here, but I'll click on blank project, click on finish. And then it asks me, you have one or more VIs open. Do I want to add this to the new project? I'll say, yes, go ahead and add. Now you don't have to add really, but in this case, I actually do want to add this VI to the project. So I um, go ahead and click on add. And then after a few moments, it will um, finish what it's doing and you'll have the new project created with the VI in it. Take note that your project can have several um, VIs in it. So it is possible inside your project that you have several VIs. In fact, I could go ahead and add some more VIs to this. I could right click on this and um, click on, I'm um, sorry. Okay, I could click on new VI to actually add a new VI. Or I could come to add and it could ask me uh, file. And then uh, when I tell it to bring up, when it brings up the window, I can now go ahead and navigate and decide the VI I want to add. But in this case, I'll just leave it to be since this VI is all that I need. So I've added this VI to this project. So the idea is I'm going to compile this project into an executable file. So let me go ahead and save this. Um, let me go ahead and save this, save as, it asked me what name that I want to call the project. So I'll just simply, I'm going to see, um, where are you? Okay, online tutorials, lab view, and I'll call it countdown timer, um, Project. Now, let me just create a folder and put it inside the folder. So, account down timer. Okay, so count down timer project. You don't have to write it without the spaces. So, let me go ahead and put spaces there so that um, it doesn't seem as if there can be no um, space in the file name. So, that's the name of my project, and I can compile this into an executable. Now, in order to compile this into an executable file, I need to tell it I want it to compile into an executable file. The way I can do that is right click on build specifications, go to new and select application. So we could make it an installer.net interrupt assembly package, zip file, whatever. But then executable is what we're interested in. That's the purpose of this particular video. So I right click and I say, I want it to be an executable and it could pop up a um, dialog window asking me a number of questions. What do I want my the build specification, what I want the name to be. So I simply call it countdown timer. What do I want the name of the file to, or the actual executable to be? I'll just call it timer in this case. What's the location I want it to be? Okay, this is fine. The direction, the um, destination directory. Now take note of this. When it is done building, this is the location where the timer will be when it is done building. So it is possible you don't want it in this particular location. For example, I don't want it in this location. So I will delete that. I want it to be inside this location, but then inside builds. So enter the project. So we could just actually click on the browse icon and just simply go there. So inside, inside um, lab view, inside hand and timer, then I could place it inside this place. Let's say I have a, a folder I'll call builds. Oh, I can type builds 
So I'll go into that folder and I'll say current folder. So now it's going to save it inside this folder and I'll leave it as this, that okay, this is fine. And build specification description, I could talk about that, but I won't bother. There is, okay, next, what is also very important, source files. Now remember, you could have several VIs inside your project. At the very top level, you need to have one that once you run this executable, there's a particular VI that will be run. The interface that will be shown, you need to specify what that is. In this case, I have just one VI, so it is fine. And I can just keep it this way. You also have some VIs you always want to include, but I'll leave that for now. There are several other settings that we could run through, but I really will not bother about these for now. Um, or let me bother about one of them, icon. So here, if you have an icon file that you have already created, then what you can simply do is include it in here. If you have not created one already, you can come to Icon Editor, click on Icon Editor, it will bring up the LabVIEW Icon Editor, which is this window over here, and now you can create your own editor, you can create your own um, your own icon. So you can make it a 16 by 16 um, icon, a 32 by 32 icon. Now these are different ones. The 32 by 32 icon is what will show up inside the Windows Explorer folder. Typically, um, when you're inside the Windows Explorer, um, this icon that you see here, okay, this looks like the 16 by 16 um, 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 icon, but then if we expand it a little bit, then you see the 32 by 32 icon. So there are two different icons that can show. So what I'll do is I'll actually create icons for both of these. And just this, if you want, is for the fun of it. You could use several of these tools over here if you want. So um, let me go ahead and just use, say, this. I just simply draw this. And what color do I want it to be? Let's say I want it to be red. And I'm um, sorry, just give me a moment. What did I do? Okay. Yeah, so make that red. And uh, forgive this. This is going to be a very weird icon. So call it a. Ah, okay, sorry. This was still on red. And then I want to have this on, and I want to draw it down here. It's still red in color, and this time let me make this one blue. So, like I said, please forgive. Ah, okay, turns the whole thing blue, whatever. And then let me come in here and do something rather similar. Um, okay, so this time I'll make this one red, since the other one was blue, and in fact, this will be good. So, we get to know which is um, which by just taking a look at the color, we can tell which is. Um, which was which is the 16 by 16 which is 30 by 2 so 32 by 32 is blue 16 by 16 is red so i can go ahead and save this file save us i'll put this in the same location now it does not have to be in the same location all that needs to happen is that i must add it to the same um, project so i'll come to countdown timer and just will say icon or let me say timer icon and i'll go ahead and save so now timer icon has been created. Um, let me come into this folder and you see timer icon type icon. So this has actually been created. So to just illustrate to you, this is, remember red is 16 by 16 icon. If I expand it, notice it turns to blue. That's a 32 by 32 bit icon. So you probably want to have both specified the um, 16 by 16 and 32 by 32 bit icon. Now, um, so let me click on OK for now. Now I can't use this new icon I just created because it is not, there is no icon file inside the project. First of all, I need to specify I don't want to use the icon file. There is no icon file inside this project as of now, so I cannot use it. So let me click on OK and come back to this point now and add the file we just created, this time my icon. Now I'm adding it to my project. Now it is in my project, I can come back here. I can right click on or double click on this really. It comes back here. Now I can come to icon. Don't use the default icon, instead use this file. I say OK and now we're good. So we're done with everything we want to set. Like I said, there are several other things that you can set in here. I will not bother about all of them. Um, I'll not bother about all of these for now. Okay, so all I'll just simply do is I can click on OK or I can click on Build. Let me click on OK um, for the fun of it and now right click on here and click on Build. It's effectively the same thing. So I'll click on Build and then it just takes a few moments and LabVIEW is done. It has built the executable file. I click on done. Let me come to the folder. Remember, inside this folder, you have builds, and inside builds, now you have this. It's an application. So if I go ahead and I could forget about that file, but this VI is still over there. Whether it's open or closed does not really matter. Once I double click on this icon here, now it brings up the countdown timer, an executable file. It will bring it up in a moment. Countdown timer run. Okay, it's just run on my other screen. So that's it. 
So it's the name still comes in there as countdown, as countdown timer.vi, but take note, this is actually an executable file that was created. And so that if you don't have LabVIEW installed on the machine, this will actually still run. Okay, if you don't have LabVIEW installed on the machine, this executable file will still run. The only thing the person running it will need to have on his machine is the LabVIEW runtime. So once he has the runtime installed on his machine, this executable file runs perfectly well on his system. So when you do create an, a LabVIEW VI and you want to deploy it on somebody else's computer, um, all you could, all you need to do is really to uh, create an executable file. As an example, you could create an executable file, give to that person. The person runs the VI on his execute runs the executable on his own system, and it runs effectively as a VI as long as he has the LabVIEW runtime installed on his machine. So that's it for this video. Um, I could just go ahead and run count and just let it go ahead and count down. Um, the one thing I just want to emphasize is. The, it's an executable file and it runs fine. You don't have to have LabVIEW installed on a machine um, to run this executable as long as you have the LabVIEW runtime. Now, once the person does not have LabVIEW, the person doesn't have the original VI, the person cannot edit this VI, okay? To edit the VI, you need to have LabVIEW installed. You need to have the original VI and then I'll work with that. However, this is just an executable file. It's an application, very small in size and it runs perfectly well. It's a fully featured program as is, but then the person doesn't have access to the source code and the person does not need to have um, the LabVIEW VI installed on the machine. So thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.